there's this juxtaposition, this remarkable juxtaposition going on of your body betraying you and you're in constant physical pain. And at that same time, your body vaulted you into this. It's offering me a world beyond my wildest dreams. I felt really angry, actually. I just felt, you're joking. Like I've had these five huge operations up until now, and I'm, I'm either stuck in this pain or I have to have these eight surgeries. And I fell into a state of hopelessness. I also felt like a complete imposter and like I didn't deserve to be there. Because in many ways, like who deserves that opportunity? But at the same time, I think because I felt so lucky and um, like you said, almost like I'd been picked and what are the odds of that? I, I wanted to, to make sure that I did a good job. And, um, and what's funny is you, you kind of go from being, or I went from being a 16 year old doing my exams, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, swatting mm-hmm. away, trying to get my grades to then going into this very adult world. As soon as you come onto a set, it's an adult world and the fashion industry is a very adult world. And, and I'm sure that part of why, I think it's an interesting one, what comes first, the chicken or the egg? Was I already someone who, who didn't want to, you know, reveal my shadow? Probably yes. Did I do something that encouraged me to hide my shadow? Yes. Yes. But it, it compensated, you know, uh, that on the one hand, of uh, all of the difficulty and physical and emotional pain were compensated for by the affirmation, uh, the being chosen uh, for modeling. So I don't think, I almost think it wasn't, it didn't. I suppose affirmation in a funny way doesn't feel quite, it doesn't feel maybe so true to what it felt like. It was a compensation a hundred percent. I think I was, it felt like this compensation of complete luck and, and having an opportunity that was not fair, you know? So, so I want to lean into this just a little bit more. So here you are, you're 16, 17, you're living with pretty much constant pain at this point. So at, at, so I had, I had the first, I did the first shoot and then I was uh, bed bound like two weeks later for a month. Because of the surgery or because you were in because so much of pain? The right. surgery. But, but even like at the shoot, are you in pain? You know what? It's a really interesting question because I never think about that shoot and think of the pain. I think of all the things that I've described. Yes. But I would have been in pain. Yeah, I would have been in a crippling man of pain. There's this juxtaposition, this remarkable juxtaposition going on of your body betraying you. And, and you know, you're supposed to be a young woman who's, who's growing and thriving and your 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 body is betraying you and 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 you're in constant physical pain and at that same time your body yes exactly vaulted you into this everything yeah it's offering me a world beyond my wildest dreams yep and you know what's also interesting i think is it's funny to me that I can't remember what the pain was like at mm-hmm. that time mm-hmm. because I think it provided an escape. And I also imagine maybe, or I wonder if part of why, why maybe I ignored it or tried my best to ignore it was that when I did it felt like it didn't exist and I was just only existing in this other world, Mm -hmm. which of Mm -hmm. course wasn't true. And when Mm -hmm. you ignore the pain, it comes back to bite you. 
right? Which which I want to get to because you've you've alluded to that 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 we haven't talked about it yet, but I think it's really important. Is sort of like what's the attitude shift? But I I, I just want to you know there there is a real connection with shadow and the body, especially I think in you know Western culture, you know that 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 often you know the the shadow pretty much is uh, the container for shadow for for many of us. And and here you're having this very interesting relationship with it, um, in that both yes the 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 shadow is really coming up through this embodied experience, and at the same time it's also kind of carrying this very light bright um, persona. So so um, so so let me let me go back and pick up something from the story and and see what comes up from there. So you were you were told. Uh, you had the two hip surgeries and then there was this other pain and you were told uh, there's more structural issues. And did you say eight more operations? Did I hear that correctly? Yeah. And that's when you slipped really into despair. So you couldn't, the protective wall that you put up failed at that point that there, that, that you, you slipped very understandably into uh into a dark place. And I'm, I'm curious about what that was like in your life in general, and did it affect your work and that kind of thing. But then did you elect to have those eight surgeries? No. Let's just sort of do the, the, what, what, what did you do? I didn't, I didn't have the surgeries. I didn't see it as an option because it would have taken six years of wheelchair to crutches to operations, to wheelchairs, to crutches. And at that point, I already had felt quite heavily impacted by what, mm-hmm. what you know, the, the four hip surgeries I'd already had. And so I didn't have it. I didn't have them. And I didn't have them because I just, he sort of said, the, the doctor sort of said, you know, you can choose to have these when you like. It's, um, you know, your, your situation is progressive. Um, you may not have to have them or, but, but in order to be pain free and structurally sound, you will. And I just, Mm. I just, I felt really angry. Actually, I just felt like what, what the fuck basically. (laughs) Basically, yes. like, use my language, but, but, you know, you're, you're joking. Like I've had these, these five huge operations up until now, and I'm, I'm either stuck in this pain or I have to have these eight surgeries and it, and it felt like, which is the work, which is the better of two evils, basically. Mm-hmm. And I fell into um, a state of hopelessness where I didn't, I couldn't imagine things Mm. changing. That's what happened. I couldn't imagine beyond. And I know that, you know, we're encouraged to live in the present, but I think you have to have a sense of of the future can motivate you is, is especially when you're young and terrified is, is thinking, about the promise of the future. And I didn't, I couldn't imagine things changing. And, and I felt, I felt, um, I felt sort of, I felt lesser, to be honest. I felt Mm. like my friends are firstly, my relationship with my, my body completely changed at that moment. Can just, really, just let me, I want to just nail this down. You're 20, 20 at this point. About 20, yeah. Okay. All right. So, so, so t- say, say now how your relationship with your body changed. So my relationship with my body completely changed mm-hmm. where once upon a time it had been this vehicle for freedom. I loved running. Mm-hmm. I loved, oh, God. I loved sports. I loved exploring um with my legs <laughs> and and i loved my job as well mm. but it suddenly it suddenly just felt like who you think you are is not actually who you are now and um hmm. 
I unplugged and I dissociated and and I basically um I felt very uncertain. I didn't have the answers and nor did anyone else. The, the, I guess the surgeon had the surgical answers, but the physio had the physio answers. There wasn't a clear cut path for me. Mm-hmm. And I, I felt, um, I felt ill-equipped to deal with, deal with it and to know how to navigate it. And as a result, I kind of had this sense of like, okay, well, maybe I just can't do anything. Hmm. And I think that the other thing that's sort of, that's relevant to mention is that it began to affect, I suppose you could also say it developed from chronic pain into complex chronic pain. And complex chronic pain, I've since learned, is where consistent pain from a physical, structural situation mm. uh, begins to affect your mental condition and your mental state. Sure. And it began to um, cast this shadowy filter over every single situation I was in, whether I was at work. And I would be trying to ignore it, but it was clawing at me. Or if I was like the pain was clawing. Yeah, it was very. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was in my face, pounding. And Mm, jeez. Or you know, I would be speaking to people, or I would be in a conversation, and I would be half there and half thinking about. It's not even think. I wouldn't be. I would. I would be aware of the pain, but mm-hmm. then that. What would happen with the awareness of the pain is that it would branch out into fear, anxiety, um, shame, anger, anger, um, all of all of these things, which I then the the sort of it it almost developed into this internal battle where I had this persona that I believed I was it wasn't Mm -hmm. like oh I'm gonna put on my mask even though now I think about it I probably had a very well developed mask um but I had this persona and then I had this this shadow that was growing and it was bigger than me and, Mm. and it was scary and it felt it felt out of control to be honest because because I started to not trust, I started to sort of lose faith in myself and my ability to be in the world um, in the way that I wanted to be, or I'd been able to be at that point. Mm. Because, because I was contending with this, with this thing that I had no language for. Mm-hmm. And, and, and also in a wider, in a wider sort of, uh culture i had no i had no one to sort of look to not that i'm the only person of course sure we all know that everyone deals with these issues 